Cool. Right. Um, one of the things I want to talk about now is empathy. Do we know empathy? Do you know what's the difference? Uh, the difference between false empathy and true empathy. Anybody? False empathy is when you when you feel sorry for someone, or you feel for them, but you see you see the the pain that they're feeling, and you and you call it true, and then you still and so that's why you feel bad for them, and so what you're doing is you're you're basically reinforcing their belief that they're that they're here and that this world is real, that the illusion is real. It takes two people to be sick. Did you know that? One person to be sick and another person to confirm it. Mm -hmm. It takes two people to experience truth. One person to speak the truth and another person to acknowledge it's the truth. Isn't that right? Mm. Okay. So, sickness is an illusion and it's only made real when you confirm that it's real. So, false empathy is taking someone's problems very seriously. Okay? Feeling sorry for ourselves is taking our own selves very seriously. And this is simply the reflection of the original mistake when we took the ego thought very seriously indeed. And we will see later these are examples of what the Course would consider false empathy, as when we identify with someone's weakness instead of someone's strength. False empathy is always coming from a perception of differences. Suffering is very clever and effective way the ego makes the body and differences real. Okay? So let me... I'm going to read something else, I can't find it there now. Okay? Take for example, gratitude. Okay? What's wrong with gratitude? Anybody? Is gratitude good or bad? See? I was saying, yeah, it feels like it should be good. Alright, is, is gratitude, is there gratitude in heaven? No. Why? Because you're already there. It's like, what's there? To, I mean, it's like you There's are no gratitude. It's, yes. it's not a, as opposed yeah. to. Who gratitude? It's a constant state. Yeah. yeah. Who, who are you grateful to? Right. Nobody. Exactly. One. Exactly. So, all right, uh, gratitude is not needed in heaven, but it is needed here. You can only be grateful to someone you believe is separate from you. Not true? Right. Mm -hmm. You can't be grateful to yourself. We hate ourselves. <laughs> Only when there are what? times we're grateful to ourselves. Of course. But do we really love ourselves? You see, as long as we believe that we're guilty, we're separated, then we're always going to have this hate about ourselves. There's going to be that part of ourselves that we hate. So the way that we get to love ourselves is we get the hate part away as far as possible. Now we're sitting in this love part. Is that love? No. No. It's love through denial. Okay, so you can have great love and be grateful to yourself, but it's a fabrication. It's not real. Because there's the part of yourself that you're still trying to get rid of, that you have gotten rid of. You put it, put it on to someone else. So you literally have attacked someone else, mm -hmm. and now you're sitting feeling all loved up about it. Does that make sense? What about when you are it? When you own, when you own, you know the hate that you have. Exactly. So what is the what? How do you do that? By owning it and feeling it. How? I mean, how? How do you just tell me in a practical way? How do you own? You feel it, right? And you express it, right? And what would the course call that? Acceptance. Acceptance. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. That's exactly what it is. Forgiveness. That's why I was pulling it out of you there. <laughs> yeah. 
did, oh, I wasn't testing you or anything like that. Yeah. But that's what, that's what forgiveness does. I didn't know what you wanted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So forgiveness basically, you know, you can intellectually forgive or you can feel it. And okay. Yeah, not, yeah. So what I was going to, where I was going with that is, okay, as you forgive yourself by feeling it and experiencing it and expressing it and owning it, you know, it's like as you move it out or wherever it goes, then you begin to feel more of a self-love. Yeah, that's right. That's right. The more that you forgive yourself, the more you're going to love yourself. Mm-hmm. Jesus says very clearly in the Course, okay, that forgiveness is the reflection of the love of heaven. Love. Right. Yeah. And then once you love yourself, then you begin to love everyone. Exactly. And everything unconditionally. That's right. Including God. Yeah. So, let's move on. You have to be careful of those who always want to help. Because they are not coming from a place of love. They are coming from a place of seeing differences. You need help and I am the one who can help you. Remember, this is false empathy. Remember, we're not talking about behavior. We're talking about the need to be a helper. The need to be a do-gooder. The need to be a healer, the need to be a teacher, the need to be anything in a relationship where we are different from the other person. As long as you continue to see yourself different from the other person, you will always, always be coming from a place of false empathy. When we feel sorry for someone, the underlying idea is, this is a terrible thing that has happened to you. You need my help. What we are doing is we're driving the ego's knife in even deeper. So you could walk into a hospital and you'll see someone and you'll look at their body and you'll see them maybe, you know, uh, uh, dying uh, uh, a painful death. And you're looking and you go, oh, that poor person. All you're doing is you're sticking the knife in deeper. Because you're joining that person in suffering. Okay? All healing comes from joining in love, not through suffering. Right. So that's, can you repl- the opposite of that scenario then? From when the I would walk into a hospital and I would see someone and I would look, I would look beyond the body. And I would look and I would see the spirit, the eternal, the immortal, the perfection. I would transcend what my eyes see. Remember what Jesus says in the Course, there's nothing as blinding as perception, perception. of form. So that means when what we believe we see something, we believe that the reason why we see it is because, or sorry, the reason why we believe it is because we see it. The opposite is the truth. The reason why we see it is because we believe it. Right. Mm-hmm. The mind is a very, very, very powerful device. Okay, so we're always joining people in suffering. We're never joining people in perfection. Okay? So this is what false and true empathy is about. We'll get to true empathy in a moment. Okay, we'll just go through false. When I feel sorry for you, I'm really saying that I feel bad because of what has happened to you. I'm identifying with your experience of yourself as a victim. And if I if I identify with you as a victim, I identify with myself as a victim. I cannot escape the same sentence that I place on you, I now place on myself. This is really at the very core of the ego's false empathy. When I feel sorry for you, I condemn myself. It's got nothing to do with you. Now the ego makes this look like that you're a good person. Look how kind, look how considered you are, look how caring you are. You know, look at this poor person and look how good you are. You know, look how wonderful a person you are able to help. Okay? And all I am doing now is falling for that story and now I am condemning myself. I am putting myself into the role of a victim and within a short period of time I will be victimized because this is where I place myself. I place myself as a victim. And it's been my choice. Even though, you know, you can turn around and say, well, I didn't know about it. I was making that choice. You know, ignorance is no excuse. 
Okay, We're, we can't turn around and say, I didn't know about this. Now we know about this, are you still going to continue to do this? Feel sorry for no one, or else you will condemn yourself to hell. When we feel sorry for someone, when you feel sorry for anyone, you are really attacking that person because you are reinforcing separation, not unity. When we feel sorry for others, our hearts goes out to this particular person or that particular group. It could be a group in the Middle East, you know, maybe ISIS has killed a number of Christians and we're feeling sorry for the Christians. Maybe a bomb has gone off in Israel or maybe a bomb has gone off in Palestine. Maybe a bomb has gone off in Northern Ireland where we had loads of bombs. All of these atrocities is happening in the world all around you all of the time. And all of a sudden you're tuned into it. And you go, ah, oh, that's terrible. Ah, oh, that's terrible. And all you're doing is making choices for yourself. Did you want to be a victim? And within a couple of hours, maybe a day, you're kind of feeling a bit down, you're feeling a bit depressed, you're feeling a bit angry, you're feeling a bit, of, you know, all of these things. And you're going, where the hell did this come from? You don't have a clue. And all you have done is, it looks like a really good thing, where you've joined other people and you go, you know, my heart goes out to you. And I see it in Facebook all the time when an atrocity happens. I always kind of keep an eye and I love the right to see who's awake. Because everybody joins in in the suffering. Teachers of A Course in Miracles, students of A Course in Miracles, all will send this, you know, send this, you know, send love to all the poor people here, or send love to all the poor people. You get it on Facebook all the time. Mm -hmm. Everybody's joining in with everybody else's suffering. And then everybody wondering why they're suffering. Because you're choosing suffering by joining in and suffering. You know, you don't need to be Einstein. Could you say you're holding it in place? Of course! Okay. Why? Because there is no suffering. So just go to forgiveness. Right? You bring it back into yourself, you correct it. You must correct mm -hmm. these. I mean, knowing this is meaning nothing. Okay? Information is not healing. Application is healing. When you make the corrections on your awareness, on your perception, that's healing. So our perception needs to be healed. Remember, you can only see two ways. You can see falsely, you see truly. Remember the two pictures. Mm -hmm. The problem is we only see one picture when we're asleep. We're seeing the false perception. When we wake up, we're going to see a second picture. We're going to see true perception. And that's the choice that you have. Okay. Almost always when we identify with a group that has been unfairly treated or oppressed, or a person who is in pain, someone is perceived as the victimizer who has inflicted the pain upon this group or these people. Mm -hmm. You can't escape this. You can't join in the pain with someone and then kind of escape, well, no one did this to you. So you can see you're creating a victimizer straight away by joining in the pain with someone. Join in in someone's sickness. Okay? Now you're a victim of the body. Maybe you're a victim of the world. Okay? You can't escape this. These are so subtle, little uh, lessons that we really don't know the extent of how we hurt ourselves as we're going through this process. Because it looks like this is all very good, that we're a good Christian. Okay? We always see the world in, term, in terms of good and bad, good guys and bad guys, victim and victimizers. Once we do, it is obvious what we are doing. We are separating, seeing differences and making judgments, and judgments always involve an attack. That's false empathy. That's how you can always tell when you're listening to the ego and not the Holy Spirit or Jesus. You will always separate yourself out. You will see someone different to you. This person is sick, or this person's in pain, or this per poor person, this has happened to them. False empathy always chooses certain people, certain groups, or certain problems as different from others. And we establish those differences as real and important. We use empathy to make the past real by making suffering, sickness, injustice, and victimization real. We have done all that because we made the original injustice, the original judgment, the original attack on God real. 
We believe we did that to God and we simply relive it over and over again in our minds. So who is the poor person we're feeling sorry for? Ourselves. Ourselves. Mm -hmm. All we're doing is we're reliving the moment that God, basically we felt sorry for ourselves in heaven. God wouldn't let us do what we wanted to do. We wanted specialness. He wouldn't give us specialness. And we had to throw the toys out of the pram and go and get it ourselves. So that was false empathy. Now let's look at true empathy. True empathy. This is what true empathy is. We empathize with the strength of Christ in each other rather than the weakness of the ego. I am really ending another's physical pain and giving a message that says God is not angry at you. And by my love and my peace, I am reflecting for you the love and peace that is inside you. On the level of form or behavior, I may do exactly what someone else does, but my motivation will be different. I will be doing it from a place of strength, not weakness. It is not my heart that goes out to you, it is the light in my mind that calls to the light in your mind. True empathy, empathy begins with the idea that we are all suffering, that we all share the same problem. Simply being in this world is suffering because it is not our home. Okay. So what we're really doing here is we join with the other person rather than we see differences in the other person. Okay? What heals is that the healer is the reminder. You can simply just look at someone. Okay? And all you have to do is look at that person and say, I am at one with you. I am at one with you. That's true empathy. That's true joining. No matter, and this will be even compounded even the more, the more sicker the other person is. Because no one wants to be close to sickness. So we're all always doing, oh my God, you're different from me, I'm going to feel sorry for you. So that keeps the sickness away. Okay? When you walk into a hospital, everybody is going to be basically, right, trying to keep the sickness and death away from themselves. There's nobody going in there and saying, this is all mine. So why do you bring it inside yourself? Hmm? What happens when you bring the sickness inside? It dissolves. When you bring everything, everything that you see in this world inside you is a reflection of your unconscious mind. When you bring it all inside, the truth is inside you. The truth will dissolve everything that's not true. So the ego's idea is to get the sickness and the death away as far away as possible from you. To what Jesus is saying, of course, don't do that, bring it inside, and I'll take it away from you. Mm. So you, what we're asked to do here is we're again, remember what we were talking, Jody, this morning, we're, do, we're all about reversing our thinking. Mm -hmm. We're doing the complete opposite thinking-wise what we would normally do. And that's why this course is so difficult, it's so mm -hmm. hard to do. Is because we're continually doing the completely opposite of what we're supposed to do. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, emphasizing true empathy really means joining. We do not feel sorry for people who have gotten themselves into messes. Our hearts usually go out to people whom we identify as victims, but almost never to people who are victimizers. So you see, we're separating victim and victimizers. Okay? Emphasizing really means joining. The Holy Spirit uses the power of our minds to join. We have used the powers of our minds to join with the ego. Now we can use the power of our minds to join with the Spirit. The miracle and true empathy help us to move our attention away from the body and back to the mind. That is, of course, what Jesus taught on the course. On, sorry, on the cross. No matter what was done, no matter how unfair the attack on him was, his peace and love of God within was totally unaffected. What did he say on the cross? Father? Forgive them for they know not. Exactly. That was, that's how he answered all the pain, and especially what was happening with his own body. Father, forgive them, they know not what they done. He joined with them completely. Okay, Jesus was really teaching true empathy. He was asking us to join with the strength of Christ that was in him. When we identify with that strength, there can be no pain, no suffering, and no tears. 
because all suffering and pain come from identifying with the weakness of the ego rather than the strength of God. And that's true and false sympathy. I was asked to do that for a video because a number of people had uh, a number of people had a number of questions on it. So, oh. so.